been a it's, it's, it's been, been months. A while. Yeah, we, we aimed for thirty minutes. Yeah, I was, and I was podcast. Should have given a shout out to Captain Failure in the when we were talking about the Discord because we set up that watch that uh, watch party. That was fun. Oh, oh yeah. Hey, welcome everybody. Everybody, wow. Oh, hey, everybody in the club getting tipsy. Uh, <laughs> welcome to Red Gamer Dad Podcast Episode Eight, and today we're going to be talking about. All these Summer Games Fest information, uh, the showcases, um, just what we're most excited for. There's a lot of really good stuff that, and stuff that's still coming out. And now that all the biggest hype's out, now we've got the basically PR and developer interviews and people taking more deep dives and people playing demos and releasing that. And it's just uh, not a lot of games being released, but it's more of like you know where e3 used to be like this this is the hype this is the hype right now so this is, andy's bread and butter. This yeah. is we're oh, moving yeah. that train along folks uh, this and is what gets andy wet yeah <laughs> yep that's right i'm gonna have Get to scotch guard this couch yep. afterwards we're down the tarp <laughs> yep Jason yep Momoa walk this is what we also like to call the beginning of the letdown <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 that's right you know we've uh, we've been too excited before kingdom Hearts three yeah um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, what games caught your guys' attention and from what, what showcases, because, you know, they kind of, um, kind of cross over sometimes. Mm-hmm. And f- for me, that summer games fest was a real snoozer. Like Jeff, I felt kind of bad for Jeff Keighley a little <laughs> bit because <laughs> he's like, Hey, we got some great stuff here, guys. And he acted real excited about it, but it all kind of sucked. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, the good stuff came before and after that. Yeah. So, wh- wh- what do you guys think? I liked Summer Games Fest as a whole. I feel like Jeff's segment got gutted a little bit, mm-hmm. you know. And it's like, oh, well, maybe that's the kind of like the new, the new E three kind of style mm-hmm. is that it does give you know kind of the developer that big platform like E three used to do, right? It was always like, here's E three, you've got all the stuff on the show floor, but then you're gonna have Nintendo, Microsoft. PlayStation, they're each going to have their showcases. Right. So I feel like we, we still had E3, but it's an like not E3. E3. Mm-hmm. It's like broken up into so, its own yeah. you know, part. He had really yeah. no real bangers though. I mean that that right. like the stuff that like Callisto Protocol that was showed off or that was already on Sony's stage, and then he's like, I'm going to show you almost the exact same thing, but it's a little different. Yeah. So I mean I don't know. Yeah, I I still I like it. I like the hype in the air. I feel like we need to uh, just slow the hype train down in the gaming world as a whole because things are like you said like there's tons of games coming, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but a lot of them aren't releasing anytime soon. You know, like to get and just this was the only one from the Xbox showcase, but to get Hideo Kojima coming on and saying like there is a game that I'm working on. It's coming to Xbox. Probably, you know, like <laughs> yeah. it was just like what? Like that's not a that's not a game announcement, but you know it's gonna get people hyped. Yeah. Um, games that caught my attention: Callisto Protocol, like you mentioned for sure. Love some survival mm-hmm. horror. Dead Space is one of my favorite in that genre uh, series because it just literally breathed the life back into something when Resident Evil couldn't do it at that time because it was just kind of lost on its way. Um, I've been waiting and watching for that game for it feels like three or four years where the it was said like hey glenn schofield has something in development and they hadn't released much and then they had like an early teaser and it was like "Ooh, i just can't wait to see more of this and they crushed it uh from sony's stray not a cat person yeah <laughs> But playing a cat in a neon city filled with robot-headed people, That's, I am yeah. very in, and it's coming to that their uh, subscription service. It's one of the reasons that I I chose the extra uh, level. Okay. It was just like, all right, sweet. There's going to be a payoff right away. Like Stray's going to drop, and and it's by uh, Anna Perina. Is that Anna, Anna Perina, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's the people that made um, Returnal. Oh I, really? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. I don't that's know if they're the pub. No, Returnal. No, Returnal is Housemark. Housemark. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, uh, mm-hmm. Anna Perner. I don't know if they're the developer or if they're the publisher because I think they publish a lot of stuff. Yeah, you, you, you. I, I, so I don't know who's actually making it. But they're involved and they're a stamp of approval in oh, a lot oh, yeah, of oh, yeah. situations. It's, so yeah, I'm like, sure. all right, that game looks awesome and it mm-hmm. is coming out in July. It's just a 
like two weeks away. Right. And so I'm like, oh, that that game has me stoked, and the other one is high on life. From the Xbox showcase. Oh, yeah. yeah that that looks crazy. so good. Dude, it, rem- uh, it reminds me uh, of uh, Odd World Stranger's Wrath a little bit. Yeah. Why? I've never played that game, but I've heard that comparison. Just because of, like, the the ammo types are, like, living... Or I, I guess I haven't really watched a lot of it, so I don't really know a lot about it, other than a few clips. But, you know, like, you have, like, the goofy-looking gun that might shoot slime blobs. Well, like, in Stranger's Wrath, you have, like this fuzzy little critter that you yep. shoot out of your gun. And, like, the ammo types were different kinds of, like, creatures, creatures that did different things. Like, Sweet. you know, you might have, like, a spiky one that when you shoot it, it explodes into spikes or, you know, ones that make traps or something like that. So that's that's kind of what it reminded me a little bit of. It was just that idea of, like, yeah. it's not just, oh, this is a gun that can do this thing. It's like, well, this is, like, a weird creature that you can use with the environment to, to do different things. So... But I mean, as far as I mean, that's that's about the most comparison I can make to it. Is it just like it seems the 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 combat mechanic of it kind of fits in the same kind mm-hmm. of mold. I feel like High on Life probably ended up on all of our lists of like uh they this because it was such a surprise yeah. and it's so crazy. So like I want to know like Luke, what would what was it about that game that stood out for you? Because I think it was on your list. Maybe it's not. Yeah. No, I just saw the trailer and then instantly I was like, okay, this is definitely going to be a game to watch out for. I think just the goofiness of it and it's very different from a lot of other games. Too. Just yeah. roller. Yeah. 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 So good. And he did the accounting accounting plus. Accounting so, plus. Yeah, yeah. That was a that was a super strange meta game. I remember I played it with you and it was yeah. just like that was that kind of changed the idea of what a game could be. Like it was very out there. So. That's one to play yeah. if you haven't played, and if it's this is going to be in any of the same vein as that was, then it's definitely worth checking out. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. I I love their sense of humor. Obviously, mm-hmm. Justin Roiland of Rick and Morty fame, mm-hmm. but he also owns the of Squanch Games. Squanch, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and they've been Squanch. producing games, so it's not like just some random studio that came out of nowhere. It's like. No, they have game development mm-hmm. chops. Like, they're going to produce. It looked so popular. They had another one that was pretty good that I can't remember the name. Yeah, I can't remember the name of it, um, but it, it's, it, I've never played it, but it looked good. Yeah, um, but that trailer looked awesome. It looked like yeah. a lot of gameplay, and it looked smooth. Mm-hmm. And so it was like, oh, man, this game, we know you know it's going to be funny. Yeah. You know it's going to be packed with ridiculous personality. And the fact that they you know turned it on their head and the personality is in the weapons mm-hmm. right like i i just think that touch is gonna be sick mm-hmm. you know what what do you what did you like about it Andy? oh man so jeff Keeley's saying none of nothing did uh, did it for me um the uh the state of play final fantasy 16 <laughs> let's go that looks awesome that looks so good i am so excited but i but after 14 did me dirty and it released two weeks later, I can't take off another week of work for this. I won't do it because he's going to, Yoshi P's going to push it back. Do it. Do it. I'm excited for 16 because then Andy's going to shut the fuck up about 14 for like at least. Here, here, no, what? No, no, no. Okay. So, so, so I, I do have to say, disclaimer, um. I did cancel my subscription to Final Fantasy XIV. He recently. literally has a picture of Yoshi P on his phone. What? <laughs> That's his <laughs> background. I, I do. I do. Is that I because do. you feel? Do you feel him judging you now every time you remember that you canceled your fourteen subscription? He's gonna watch you know, this. He, he specifically you. said he's like, you know what? If if you don't find what you know you're interested in what we're doing now, you know this is our game is meant for you to come back later when you yeah. want to. So I'm gonna come back when there's a lot of story stuff. That I like because I really really enjoy that story, mm-hmm. you know. And I've got other games to play, but anyways, Final Fantasy 16. Oh yeah, okay. Uh, Square Enix also announced um, Final Fantasy 7 uh, remake part two mm-hmm. coming out in uh, 3047. <laughs> 2023 uh, winter and uh, Crisis Core, uh, which comes out this winter, uh, the mm-hmm. the remaster, which. Super cool. So we got a lot of really good things coming from Square Enix. Yeah, they're uh, really focused. They on. they are and they're taking that money. They're not investing in the cloud or at the <laughs> NFTs anymore. And they are funneling it into their IPs yeah. that they know that and they got rid of all that other bullshit. Tomb Raider, fuck you. We don't need Tomb Raider. 
Well, Marvel's Avengers, we never needed that in the first place. See you later. Laura. Yeah, <laughs> we're, we're, we're out of here, and we're focusing on what we do best, and I think that that's awesome. I think that's what they should have did, and they're doing it. That's great. Mm-hmm. Um, Xbox was another highlight for me. Um, Redfall. I didn't know, even know what that, what that game was until like I actually seen something. I'm like, this looks really cool. This looks like um, just a more interesting um, Back for Blood to me. It, it looks right. like a more interesting Back for Blood. I never got to play Left for Dead. Never did. And Back for Blood was supposed to be that spiritual successor. And I'm like, it's fun to a point. It's fun to a point, and then it's not fun anymore. But this looks just, like, way more interesting, you know? That's the one game that severely let me down. I didn't think it looked good at all. I, I wanted to. I think the story, I think the, the plot behind it looks great. Mm-hmm. But the trailer left me severely underwhelmed. Man, I'm hoping yeah. that as they release more information about that, that it looks better and better. I'm going to 100% say that I was disappointed because in my brain I was thinking of Red Wall. <laughs> I'm get, you, you probably don't yeah, know Red Wall. like with the one, animals. With yeah. the animals. Yes, that like, would be amazing. It's like a medieval game. style story yeah. with animals, yeah. like mice or like knights and shit like that. Sweet. So in it's my like, brain, I when, every time I heard Red mm-hmm. You were thinking Red Wall. I was thinking Red Wall. And Red then when I realized awesome. that's not what it was, I was like, I don't fucking care. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, it's, I was excited to go on an adventure with a mouse. <laughs> it was it's a, a book series from just the 90s with like, all these animals that, like, yeah, it was a medieval setting. And like yeah. it was super cool. This is awesome. The yeah. only like reference that I have to that is the Disney version of mm-hmm. uh, um, who stole Robin Hood. Oh yeah, the fox. Right? Yeah, what's that? Yeah, with yeah. the fox. Yeah. Yeah, 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 and yeah. I was like, yeah, it turns out that when you yeah. put... Uh, you know, lifelike animals and yeah. things and put them in medieval armor, yeah. it's a guaranteed hit. Yeah, yeah <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And that's exactly <laughs> what it is. It's like taking is, a yeah. human story, but instead of humans, you make them animals. Yeah, that's awesome. And, and okay. Starfield, like, I mean, okay, they showed it, and I think that it looks fine right now. I just don't know how it's going to shake up. You know, I'm not worried about the whole promises of, you know, a thousand planets or this or that. I'm just I'm just worried about what 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 it's gonna feel like. Yeah. What what it's gonna feel like. I mean, I don't even care so much that they have Fallout in space, and you're gonna hate every time. Oh, no. oh. Space and Fallout, dude. If it is like Fallout, I just can't get into Fallout. I Stop can't get your legs. Any Fallout seventy six, <laughs> I hated it. Uh, Fallout game. three, I really hated it. And that was people's favorite. Four, I played that. I was like, God, oh, this is more of that same bullshit. <laughs> and I'm like, Vegas. only now you got to build a village. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's constantly bugged by Preston. I, I, I don't, I, I, I don't know if, if it is, if it is gonna feel like that. But I don't know. I'm into, I'm into, I'm into the more space stuff, you know. But not so much aesthetic. Really does it for me. When I went from hating Borderlands Three to loving Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. Mm-hmm. I, it was a little bit more of the gameplay stuff, but it was also the aesthetic that yeah. that, that that did it for me. That's, that's so. What Starfield was I I was actually pretty hyped on that. I think it looks great. I they feel like the fact that when they dropped something, it was very substantial, mm-hmm. right? So you're like, okay, like I we've got an idea of this game, and this is why the development took so long. It looks gorgeous. You can do so much, you know. But now we just need to figure out like, well, how does it? play what are those mechanics yeah and that will make or break that game but to me that's that's a game that was in my head as like oof, man this could be a system seller in game pass for me if it's that level mm-hmm. of good because and, i think it looks incredible and there were quite a few other games on the uh on the xbox side because they've denounced so many games and it was a great showcase it was. but i mean those are the ones that stand out and oh lightyear frontier there's, it's not a big game, but you're, you you land on this planet, you're a mech, and you gotta farm. You gotta wow. farm, you gotta build <laughs> shit, games, yep, you gotta that's... build shit. Dude, I am like the nah. most city boy, urban farmer, like, I don't like to, farming's hard. Shout out to farmers, okay? Shout out to farmers. <laughs> shout, shout out to farmers. Out to farmers. Shout thank, out to you, farmers. Uh, thank you. You know what? But I can't do that. I can't do that, but in a video game, fucking let's go. It's I like love fishing. it. I hate, I couldn't, I can't fish for longer than 10 15 minutes but you give me a good fishing mini game in a game i'll fish for yeah. oh yeah yeah yeah, did, yeah. Did, wait this is total offshoot but did any of you guys have 
the real for the Sega Dreamcast. Oh my god, no. no. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. But real bass I, fishing. I had it. it was awesome. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did anybody play that fish game? Seaman. Seaman. Yeah. <laughs> it was too weird. I read about it. This is but, weird. Yeah, it I almost downloaded it on on like the uh, emulator or whatever just to bet. But I'm like, I I feel like that game had so many different like you had to like talk into it and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't think I'd actually be able to play that effectively. It also went the wrong direction with the. Uh, animals doing human things <laughs> like a fish with a human face turns out it's terrifying <laughs> you know? especially when it smiles at yeah. you <laughs> anyway sorry yeah yeah so that's that's basically i mean there yeah light year frontier looks really good um and uh when did nintendo nintendo's mini direct uh direct mini that had some good stuff in it as well i think the one thing that i'm most excited for Xenoblade Chronicles 3, which is coming out later uh, this month. When the, by the time this comes out, like later this month, uh, later in July. Um, and uh, Harvestella, a Square Enix game where you also farm. All the farming. Uh, where you do. also farm, you dungeon crawl. Ooh. It's, uh, yeah, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, Josh is like, I like these scary AAA games. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, like, I just want to pick up these radishes. I, Leave me alone. Yeah, no, yeah, I want to do the I'll things that I'm too you. lazy to do, you know. <laughs> um, but anyways, yeah, it's a lot of cool stuff. Those are the standouts for me, though, mm-hmm. I think, right now. There's probably a few more of them, but, um. I, I'm I'm just I'm I'm we could go on and on. Have I mean, you seen House for Cleaner Simulator 14? But that doesn't even sound great. <laughs> no, it's just, it doesn't it's even not sound right. great. <laughs> would you? Would, what was on your list from the showcases? I, see, I didn't really watch a lot of that, and I usually like I feel like a lot of that's trickled down to me through you guys or other friends. Like eventually, I'll kind of come across trailers and things. There's already so much. We're like we're so inundated with games that I usually don't get super hyped for stuff that's six months or a year out because. There's already so much to get me excited now at this point, I feel like. You know, um, Live a Live, I'm really excited about that's coming out next month for Nintendo Switch. Because that looks like, that you know, go. it's got a lot of quality of life changes from that original title that I think will really make it a worthwhile game to play. And it's really gonna, it's got me pretty well with the nostalgia factor because it's kind of like Chrono Trigger and Saga Frontier blended together with like, you know, a whole host of different characters and you play through their lives and then. I think they kind of like end up in some time traveling thing, so they party up at the end. So that seems really cool. Um, Wait, is is the is does this game have a, a Reese's Reese's situation going on? Yes. Is it li- live a live live no one, a live? No one. Really I, knows. I the first time I heard of it, I was I thought I always said live. I thought it was live alive because that means like live a life. I don't yeah. Know. You guys, post up in the comments. There's Seriously. definitely tell a us, right way to say how we're doing, doing this wrong. And I think it's live alive. Yeah, I think it's live alive. I think it's live alive. Okay. We'll go with yeah. live alive. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, to me, it was only. Yeah. I think it was. Like, live, a great I think it was I live. I think it was live alive is what I first started calling it when I first heard it. But yeah, I think it's live alive. I think is what is actually. Reese's is definitely wrong. I, I, I know that. It sounds wrong. I, 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 I know that. Did, did anything else stand out to um, you in the in the trailers that Andy and I are? We we got conductor hats. We did, we did hype train baby. Yeah. Oh man, I love it. We're I love this season. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> yeah, give me on and off the tracks. Yeah. Plesso <laughs> Protocol is another one I'm looking forward to. You had shared that with me like a year ago, and that seems really cool. I know the um, Dead Space remaster. No, remake, actually, yeah, yeah. and that should be interesting, too. Um, there were a host of indie games, too, that kind of, like, showed up, like, a little a little devil inside seems really cool. It's kind of like you're playing as someone who's, like, a Witcher character. You go out and kill a lot of various monsters. It has a lot of personality, and that seems like a really good game. Yeah. Stray also seems like a lot of fun, because who the hell doesn't want to be, like, a cat running around in a city full of robots? So, yeah, yeah. You know, that seems neat. Um, of course, I'm excited for God of War. Like, I can't wait to see when that's going to be announced. You know, for the release date. But so. they didn't show that. They didn't show it. No. They didn't show it. Now, yeah. with that Dead Space remake, because mm. I did see that that they actually had that on one of the panels when Microsoft said, like, in the next 12 months we've got this much coming out. Yeah. You know, and they had that on one of the little the panels there, but. Um, they didn't show anything about it, did they? I didn't no. see anything about it. No, it was just that screen grab where they put up all the games that were going to be. Yeah, yeah. I was like, did I miss something? There. Because that would be a huge thing. 
No, because they they released that like a couple months earlier, I think, where they had like the trailers and gameplay. They they had leaked some, not leaked, but released some stories along the way. So I felt like it was kind of like, yeah, they, this is already here. Oh, know? they they did though. Yeah. Oh, I must yeah. have like not that I would actually play that game, but like I, like I said, it, I felt like it was pretty big that yeah. I would. Okay, I think okay. that game's gonna benefit huge from Callisto Protocol making it out before it. Because people mm, oh, are going to yeah. go through Callisto Protocol, you know, likely beat the game and then be like, ooh, I want more. Mm-hmm. You know, and then mm-hmm. they'll just get yeah. to go back into a modern version of Dead Space. And <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's a lot more gameplay. Right. What about you? Yeah. What about you? Yeah. Oh, Jesus yeah. Christ. This is yeah. going to be the fucking boring part of it. Yeah, fuzzy. The, 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 no, the, I, the I hate it all. <laughs> <laughs> no, to, to kind of mirror a little bit with what Luke just said, too, I, a lot of the information I get is either through you guys or just whatever pops up on Facebook. Um, you know, I'm not one to really read too much into anything or investigate or research a whole lot with stuff. I mean, if it's stuff that interests me or catches my eye, I'll, uh, you know, I'll look into it. But um, some of the stuff that did kind of pop through, you know, kind of like Andy said, um, Final Fantasy 16, I'm definitely mm-hmm. always down for new Final Fantasy stuff. Hell's as much good. as I'm not a fan of Final Fantasy 7 in general or whatever, you know, the you know Remake Part 2, you know, I'm going to end up playing it regardless of my feelings toward, <laughs> toward it. Um, but, uh, and then Crisis Core was, was pretty cool back on the PSP, so I'm, it'd be kind of cool to, to replay that again. Um, Street Fighter VI, I'm pretty oh excited god. about. Oh it. my god, yes! Oh, that was good. I really, oh, really, I, as much as I'm excited for it, I hope that they learn their mistake from their mistake with five <laughs> and releasing basically just a very bare bones, you know, game. So hopefully they they have a more tight package when it comes out. Um, uh, the Harvest Harvest. Harvest Stella. Harvest Stella, yeah, that looks pretty cool. I'm also kind of that way too with some of that stuff. Like I love, you know, the Harvest Moon games, um, Stardew Valley. Mm-hmm. You know, they're just they're they're good like relaxation things. Like you're not you know, you're not stressed about living, dying, killing shit, stuff like that. It's just you know, just trying to trying to grow some crops and, and get married. <laughs> Don't want them turnips go bad. Digital, <laughs> yeah, you, you know. You, Those are what you should play while you're listening to our podcast. Yeah, <laughs> mm, yep, yep, yeah, yeah, yeah. In the yeah. background, um, yeah, yeah. And then uh, the 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 Mega Man Battle Network collection that's coming out. I'm pretty excited about those. I love those games. Those are good. Um, on the ten of them. Really? Well, it's ten of them, but it's. Uh, so it's one, two, three, and then there's like two versions of four, two <laughs> versions of five, and two versions of six. It's totally and I lot. actually, Jeez, re- yeah, I think I actually much. read. <laughs> too, too uh, well, I, I think they tried to just do the Pokemon angle where it's yep. like, well, if you play this version, you can get this. If you play this version, you can get this. Oh, okay. And you can kind of connect them together to swap stuff back mm-hmm. and forth. Yeah. And I think I actually just recently read that they're actually releasing two versions of it. So I think each version will have like one, two, three, and then this version will have this version of four, five, six, oh and this one yeah. will have four. I, I think you're whether right. Or not that, that whether it's true or not, yeah. I'm not 100% sure, um, but I, I think right. I did. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Um, so they'll, you know, I'm, so those, those games are pretty cool. <laughs> the, only ne- the only negative side to it, though, for me is like, I just, I don't use my Switch enough, so it's hard for me to actually bite the bullet when it comes to buying certain it, it, my switch essentially is used for nintendo property because that's the mm-hmm. only place you can play it right and then you know occasionally the you know like um you know live a live is you know as, as of now is is switch exclusive which again if it was available on playstation i'd probably buy it day one and i'd actually play it and for me it's just it's it's a stupid brain thing i have i just i don't know what it is about about the switch it just doesn't just doesn't get the time. Is it the smoothness of your brain? Probably. (laughs) I mean, most likely. It's Um, the smoothness of the graphics. Were there any games or any titles or IPs that you were disappointed that weren't announced? Like, was there anything that you were really expecting to happen within the next year and there was just complete silence on it? Avowed. Avowed? I wanted Avowed. Because I knew we're not getting anything on Elder Scrolls Six for like another six years. So Avowed is going to be that thing that takes that place, I hope, right. and by Obsidian. And they put out this other game I saw, it, Pentiment is, is the name. Oh, um, yeah, and, yeah. and that looks neat in its own right, but it's smaller or whatever. It's but Avowed, Avow, oh, okay. the rest yeah. of it, like people are like, Fable, Fable's way out. Yeah. Fable's way out. And like a bunch of other stuff, um, 
but for me, it would have been avowed. That was the only one that I'm like, really? That that wasn't there? That wasn't there. Yeah. Yeah. That, so. You know what? I have no that, idea what that game even is. Neither do I. Check it know. out. It looks great. It looks you great. You know what? Nobody does because I went back and watched the trailer that released for it. Mm-hmm. And we'll get into this a little bit later. Like, what should a trailer include? Mm, yeah. Because, you know what they shouldn't include? All fucking CGI. That's just called a commercial. That's not... There's. I went back and watched the Avowed trailer, and I'm stoked for that game. Like, I think it's going... I hope it's going to be awesome. Mm. It's actually just a CGI reel mm. when you watch the original thing. And, it's no game you know, like, I've seen a lot of games do that lately, and it's really disappointing. Mm-hmm. Like, the all of the hype train stuff, it gets tampered down because you can't judge a game for real... Until you play it. Until you, until you see how it's played, right. too, you know? And I mean... Yeah, and it's like, you, that that was for Rob, like, with fan, Final Fantasy sixteen. He's like, you were like, ah, I don't know if I'm that pumped, because, like, it's very much, an, it looks like it's going to be an action game, right? And it's like, mm-hmm. it might be. At least we got to see some gameplay, and we can start kind of thinking about, like, what might this game look like? Mm-hmm. You know, and then once we get our hands on it, then you'll have the full picture. But with Avowed and so many other games that I'm, I'm forgetting, because Sony had a bunch of them too mm-hmm. in theirs, that they were just these CGI runs. And it was like, that doesn't tell me anything. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. At that mm-hmm. point, don't release something. So if Avowed wasn't there, and that is disappointing because I wanted to see more from that game, but if it's just that they don't have the gameplay in a state to to show it, then mm-hmm. Cool. Hold off and show me when you've got more. Well, and Microsoft you know? did it. Another thing that they did mostly right too is is that well, uh, pretty much right. Uh, like you should be doing it this way. I think this is this will set expectations. They said all these games that we're showing, you will be playing in the next twelve months. Hundred percent. In me. the next twelve months, yeah, and that's, that's where you know. I mean, when should a game be revealed? Okay, that's like we we've we've. <laughs> Uh, Final Fantasy 15, Kingdom Hearts 3, um, Dragon Quest 12. I'm sorry, I, I'm you, you love that series. I love that series. Mo- a lot of people love that series, but they showed that the flash screen way too early. Why even show that? Why even show that? Um, I mean, I, I see the 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 purpose of doing things like that, where they you know to let people know like, hey, this is something we're working on. This is something that's coming. Um, but isn't it kind of obvious though? Like you want to do that with things that like, that that are getting like r- revived or being brought back. Like like doing that with uh, with a Dead Space or whatever, or with uh, with another IP. Like fuck Metroid. Where the hell's Metroid at? Wait, Give me wait, something. Wait, let him finish. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Interrupting. You get me going. Get me going again. I'm sorry. I think he hit right. him. Um, Assault, brother. But no, um, I, I I I think those things are nice. Um, they're nice little teasers. You know, it's just like a movie trailer. The first trailer they put out is typically that 30 second thing to mm-hmm. be like, hey, this is coming. This is what we're working on. To kind of piggyback into what Josh said, though, when it comes to the actual trailers, the first trailer that comes out is usually, sure, CGI heavy. This is the general idea of what the game's about. These are some of the characters and stuff going on. But then as the development goes, it needs to start being, okay, maybe CGI with some gameplay. And then as they come, by the time that game is ready to come out within a few months, it should be all in-game with little flashes of the, mm-hmm. of the CGI. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, um, but I, I do see, I, 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 I do think that those things are important, though, when they do those little flashes. Because sometimes those come at the very end of the presentation because you're thinking like, oh man, this wasn't showing up, and then boom, they they nail you with yep. that teaser, and it's like, oh that that was sweet. I'm super excited now, you know. Yeah. So, but it's like when they do that, and then like six months later, they're like, we're still doing this. Here's like ten more seconds on what we already right. showed you. Then it's then it that's where it falls, and that that that's yeah. not. Well, I guess when it when when they it. when they yeah. have like such a big large break in between like. Oh, sorry, we're not gonna. They did it also with Elder Scrolls Six, and yeah. just a sweeping landscape, and it says Elder Scrolls Six. It does nothing. And, and I'm like, and you're not gonna see anything for like another. I mean, we, they they did that last year, yeah. and you're not hearing anything yeah. right yeah. now. So like, of course we knew that they were gonna be making that. Of yeah. course we did. But mm-hmm. like, 
that's when I think it's a little too early. Like, let give other things time to breathe and, and yeah. show off mm-hmm. and, and whatnot, because otherwise, that just dominates the conversation. Because yeah. I, I swear, most podcasts or other things are like, they talk about it and they're like, well, Elder Scrolls Six, that's coming out. Like, yeah, but yeah. don't that shouldn't. That's kind of the same as what you said of yeah. like, well, we're we're Samus, right? Like, there will be another Metroid game. You could just state that blanketly, and yeah. sometime within the next twenty years, there's probably going to be a Metroid, <laughs> yeah. a Metroid. Which game, the right? Metroid Prime uh, remaster is coming out oh, at yeah. the end of this year, and then See, two and three are supposed to be that's out next super year. Super interesting. But is it, are, are there? Was that just rumored yet? That wasn't no, official. It's, no, it's confirmed. It's, it's, it, it was, was confirmed. confirmed. Yeah. yeah, and that's okay. what hell yeah. I, I'm All right. that like. I don't know that there's a, a set date, right? Like, I love what Xbox did and just said, like, and maybe everybody should do that just in their their showcases of, mm-hmm. like, hey, we're going to show a bunch of stuff, but for the next 12 months, like, in the next year, these will hit. Because, you know, maybe, I always feel like maybe three-fourths of those games will actually hit that 12-month window. And some yeah. of them are going to run into delays and that kind of stuff, and that, that shit happens. Yeah. But I don't know if it's a hard line as much as it is, like, how do you trickle out the information? Right, because at some point it starts to come back and bite you in the ass, and that's the Elder Scroll Six thing, where all of a sudden people start right. doubting your development. God of War is right on that edge Ooh, right yeah, now, yeah. because when they teased it, perfect, right? Mm-hmm. Wasn't in this showcase. Everybody was hoping for it, and then all of a sudden it's just like whew, Ragnarok symbol, and you hear a voice, <laughs> and you're like, "Oh shit! It's th- <laughs> this is what they're gonna do." And then they yeah. brought out the next thing, and it was mm-hmm. gameplay. Mm-hmm. You know, and it was like, okay, you know, and that got people, of course, worried because they're like, they were used assets, but fuck you, you go, you know, you go make the game and then have to make it from ground up again. That doesn't make yeah. any sense. But it's such a huge <laughs> world. Why would you have? Anyways? But you know, but yeah. that I don't know when that last trailer was released, but it's been probably a, a year, and now they're like, well, the release date's coming, and everybody's kind of like, is it going to come out on time? Because we haven't seen anything. Yeah, there's a lot of. Yeah, I, I think God of War yeah. Ragnarok though had a much better cadence to it though than than a lot of other ones do. Yeah, um, oh, for sure. And that's uh, what I was talking about with that reveal. Like they trickled it out, I think, appropriately. Mm. So there was always something, and something mm. substantial enough to make right. you go like, oh, okay. And I'll give a vow to break on this too. That like, I, it was a few weeks ago when I watched the trailer, but it was only like a thirty to sixty second trailer, mm. and yeah. so it was like. Totally, you know, I'll give it shit, but like, totally fine that that part is 60 seconds because they're just saying, like, here's what's coming and developing a little bit of the world and giving you a little bit of maybe like store or lore, story or lore. And then it's like, whew, they're going to disappear. And it's like, okay, for me, I just, that plants that seed that I'm like, going to have my eyes on that. Like, yeah, when, right. when more information, when I see a, an article that has that name, that game in the title, like, I'm going to stop and read that one because I'm excited for it. Well, if there's one company I think that really did a great job of like kind of spacing out the information and then doing the release, it's the one thing that Gearbox did right with Borderlands 3 is how they release oh, Borderlands 3 because they nice. kind of like yeah. teased it at first and then within that next year then they revealed information. And then, like, I, what, what was it, like a couple months before they released it, that's when they are like, boom, it's coming. Like, they didn't yeah. waste time. Yeah, and that's and what Med Dread, Metroid Dread did that too. They yeah. announced like two months before right. it came out. That, that, that's like, oh, Elden Ring came out in too, October with From Software. You know? As yeah. much as you're not gonna like to hear that, Andy, like they went, like they went completely quiet on that game for like two they did. years. They did. They, they, they developed well the that. shit out of it, and then yeah. they're like, "Here you go, yeah. the most perfect game you could ever play." Yeah. Here you go, Andy. <laughs> but I like, I love that I agree release with you window because, <laughs> especially <laughs> big like, you know, great games like a Metroid, like right, like people are gonna buy it you know it doesn't matter if you say like oh yeah it's actually out right now and they would and people are gonna be like yes they're gonna scramble to their cart and then you just have to worry that maybe they'll shut your store down because they it's there's too much traffic Mm -hmm. but having that like three to five month window maybe i'll give it three to six months like that's nice elden ring gave you that little bit of time that it was like okay this Mm -hmm. is on my radar and I want to finish up the other games that I'm playing. I want to set time aside for this. I want to set money aside for this. Like whatever that mm-hmm. might look like, you know, it's a it's enough of a lead mm-hmm. that you're gonna you're gonna have it soon. Is a that's a cool yeah. feeling. So I like it within the first twelve months, I guess. Yeah, show off the like little thing like oh, 
Dragon Quest Twelve, and then maybe have like a little CGI trailer, and then come back when you actually have something substantial to show, and then and then and say it's going to be w- out within the next year, and then that's when the PR cycle starts and yep. the interviews and and the dev diaries and stuff yep. like that, and that's what that's what One Piece Lost Odyssey is doing. I had no idea that apparently they're working on that game. It's 2017. Yeah, crazy for five years. And they just announced it this year, this, last the, year, six months it? ago. But, yeah, like the initial, the initial okay. announcement. The, the initial was, announcement was, was yeah, but now they start coming oh, yeah. out with like actual gameplay yeah. and yeah. Dev they, Well, because they did, they came out with the initial announcement, like, hey, we are making this game. And then a couple months later, it was more of like the CGI trailer showing the new characters, showing mm-hmm. the area, and then in that dev diary that just released today. Um, it's, you know, it was a 12, like a 12 minute video and the, the producer guy even straight up said, he's like, everybody wants more information about this game. We want to give you some information about this game. So they started going in, they actually showed how the combat's going to be mm-hmm. and they showed, you know, how all the different characters have their own, you know, like Luffy can stretch up to higher places, Zoro mm-hmm. can cut through stuff. That's cool. Uh, Chopper goes through small tunnels, you know, things awesome. like that. So they all, so they actually showed a little bit. So I'm I'm still excited I'm 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 excited for when they're gonna release their next big trailer right. for it that'll encompass all that stuff and then hopefully have like the finalized release, release date. date. It's and, still yeah. And I mean I think I think a good a good gestation period. Obviously this game has been in production for five years. We'll use that since we know that information. Mm-hmm. I think two years to a year and a half before their initial plan release date is a good time to start talking about something. Mm-hmm. In 2017, if they said we're making this One Piece game by now, I probably would have lost any oh, interest yeah, yeah. in it. I wouldn't care. You lose faith in it. Yeah, know? exactly. That you was know? Kingdom Hearts three and Final Fantasy fifteen. Two of the. I know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you fucking put us through the fucking ringer. <laughs> Goddamn. We all had to deal down with it. Every day. We all had to deal with it. Well, people were excited. They came back every single day. That was the most exciting part of the game. Was yeah. you counting it down? <laughs> the, hey, you know what? And, Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, you were the well, highlight. You're, of you're right. Like that is a a great window and cycle and Mm -hmm. with games getting bigger more complicated larger file size better assets like five years is not an unrealistic development no Mm -hmm. you know and Mm -hmm. so it's like yeah if you tell us that day one you're starting to make this in five years like there's just too many games you're you're off my radar completely yeah. and it might get lost. Well, I mean, even in like a game like Final Fantasy 16, like they've been working on that since 15 came out. Oh yeah. You know, I yeah. mean, it, but they didn't talk about it until they had something to talk about. Right. You know, that's what's smart. Yeah. It's because yeah. Yoshi P's got And those summons look fucking great. Right. They're so <laughs> good. But as far as release dates go, do they hold any weight with, 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 with you guys anymore as far as like when they do put, I mean, and maybe the, I know that some developers are like, with one p uh, one piece that one piece game um it still it says 2022 and this is while we record this it's june 30th like yeah. we're 7 months almost into in, in, into this year and if you tell me 2022 i'm like eh, don't you kind of know guys yeah. like i mean well, what what wow. oh shit bike down. casualty all right that's all right We'll just turn it like that. That'll be a loud one. There, yeah. There, there um, we go. Sorry. Do the hold weight. I, I think. Fix that. Boat. I think the placeholder idea of saying <laughs> still 2022 is a good idea as long as they're showing information worthwhile because they might hit something along the, in the next six months that causes it to push it um, into 23. And by at least saying, you know, by not saying, you know, December 13th, 2022, like then they're kind of beholden to shareholders to to get that game out yeah. to fans to get that game out yeah. but if you don't give a specific date or month or you know then then you're kind of free to be like well if it's delayed we never promised we were yeah. going to give you this you didn't give your exact and it's time. like hopefully you know you know my assumption would be if it comes out this year it'll be around holiday so between october december mm-hmm. so i would say if they don't have like a solid like release date by like august september I would almost assume it'll be pushed, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, because I mean, look whatever everything else that, you know, like there's still the rumblings of of God of War. Is it coming this year? Is it getting pushed? Nobody knows yet. They mm-hmm. know when they're planning to do it, but again, they're not gonna say it because then they're beholden to shareholders, to fans, to everybody that, you know, it, you know. But by not giving that information, they're they're free to do what they need to do, and yeah. if it gets delayed. 
great because it's just going to make the game better in the long run. You're yeah. not going to oh, lose. Definitely. People aren't going to be like, well, fuck it, I ain't buying that shit then if they're pushing it back till yeah. next year. Mm-hmm. They're going to be like, no, please take your time. And, right. I, yeah. and I think games like with Cyberpunk and the shit that they went through with that, I hope that fans are more like, no, take your time. We want the game to be a good game. We don't want to play a half-ass game. Yeah, exactly. yeah, please yeah, don't okay. screw up what you're for. <laughs> and, <laughs> please don't screw up what you're for. And that's, yeah, you make a good point. Like, I think I think they mean something, one, because there's more great games coming out every day mm-hmm. and on a regular cycle than any other time in gaming, in my opinion. Oh, yeah, yeah right like, now is normally like, the lull. It, yeah, it we don't have lulls anymore. Exactly. Yeah, right. Right. yeah like, there's yeah. just so many good games coming out, and so as a gamer, I appreciate it because I can start to like plan what i'm going to be playing right like i'm i've been pushing through uh horizon forbidden west which i was able to table because i knew that elden ring was coming out and i wanted to spend time with that game first and then i came back to play horizon Mm -hmm. and now i've loaded up ghost of tsushima because i know that there's like a little bit of a lull that's going to happen and i really want to go through that story Mm -hmm. right and so it's like Mm -hmm. okay cool i can kind of like plan these things out but if there's all these just like nebulous dates and nothing ever means anything then how can i like get ready for that next right. game like i don't want to be in the middle of horizon then have god of war drop which is a game that i'm more interested in and then i'm gonna like be halfway through the story of horizon stop play all the way through god of war and then pick up the back half like yeah it's not that there's a there's a break in the immersion of that game then mm-hmm. yeah um I also think for other developers, right? If you're a smaller game, if you're a Harvestella Mm -hmm. and you're coming out, you want to be able to put a date out there, but you don't want to put it out on the same day that Starfield comes out. Yeah. Nobody's going to buy, you know, a potentially very good game if you can't plot those things into some of the more lulls Mm -hmm. or some of the in-between of the the larger titles. So, like, I, I do think that release dates and especially you know like tight release windows right like if it says hey this is coming december of 2022 you know like you said with uh crisis core right Mm. like we know it's coming in the holiday season at the end of this year so for me that's a close enough window to be able to to jump into that yeah because with the the game cycles and how much development it takes I feel like we're all a little more forgiving when Mm -hmm. somebody, you know, when a Starfield says, "Ah, man, we've been, we've been trying to be here, but we're going to have to push it to January. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, you didn't say like, it's supposed to be December of 2022. And then it comes out in December of 2023. That's way off. Yeah. You know, that's where people get frustrated. I I think if they can give us more transparency and like, you know, kind of narrowing it down, like you say to like a quarter or if not, like, even more so, like, a month that really helps, and we can get into more leniency, and there's a lot less, you know, critical feedback that these developers get then when they're constantly pushing things back or, yeah. you know, kind of having to wait and tell us at the last minute that that's not happening this year. It's going to happen way until next year. Mm-hmm. So. How, how much... Well, and anything else on, on that? Well, no, yeah. I mean, I was just going to kind of try, you know, like like Josh had said, you know, when it comes to the the releases if you, like you said you say december okay well then well, what else is coming in december because if they say we're going to do december 3rd then you're like you said you're not going to release at the same time you could be mm-hmm. like well we said december let's do two weeks after that way it yep. gives time because if people like you said are playing this game are they gonna buy this game or yeah. are they gonna wait until they're done with that or at that point they might just be like nah, i'll just wait till it goes on sale you know yeah. So yeah, yeah. It's, it's like Dragon's Dogma got buried by Skyrim and um, what else? Dragon, Dragon Age. Age. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Like that was a yeah. game I didn't even like look at because there were two other games that were better, and they were like the same theme that came out at the same exact time. Yeah. So yeah. Now, how much do you of a game do you actually want to see before it's released? All. Oh. <laughs> see, I think there's there, there, there is a thing like in that build that uh, will build more hype, but then it's like it is taking away some of it. What I like, and I like what Nintendo has done with their kind of like smaller directs, like with uh, that showcase the different games, and Sony has kind of done this too mm-hmm. with the games, uh, their mm-hmm. state of play, like just first focus on one game. But I like that, and then that's all I want to see of it. Mm-hmm. Like, um, the recent one that the Nintendo um, Direct Mini, or did they have it one? Ex- no, they had one exclusively just for Xenoblade Chronicles, right? Three? I so. Yeah, I think so. Where they showed, like, hey, 
this is this story. They showed a CGI trailer. Not a CGI trailer. It was... They showed a trailer of it first, like yeah, a little bit. Yeah, the whole game looks about the same, like the between, you know. Yeah, 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 really, yeah, yeah. You know, most games when they go into the CGI stuff, it's. They showed not a not gameplay detail. trailer. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Anyways, they showed that. Then it went to, hey, this is the world. Hey, this is the gameplay. Hey, this is you know just the different aspects of the game, kind of breaking it down and like boom, it's coming out at the end of July. Good. Yeah. That's all I want to see. I don't need to see, like, five different other trailers yeah. or this or that. Like, you don't need to do that. No. Like, it, it's just because I, th- there's resources that, you know, people have to make those trailers. So, like, just put more time into the Put those people into the game, yeah. you know? Yeah. I, I'm with you. Like, I actually want the least amount of information that yep. makes the game understandable. Mm-hmm. Right, like I just want to get the core concept and the core idea, and if it looks great, I'm all in. I want to know nothing else. I want to be surprised by the game when it comes out. Yeah. And I'll pick on Callisto Protocol. Like I saw the first trailer. Now I knew who who the maker was and everything, and was had been waiting on them to produce something for a long time. So I saw the first trailer that mm-hmm. I sent you, yep. in, you know, a long time ago, and was like, all in. I need I need zero more information about no this. Context. Like they literally could have showed up and just put like December second, twenty twenty three, and I'm <laughs> like, twenty twenty two, and I'm like, take my money. You know, yeah. um, everything that has released from there, like it's fine. I just don't need it. We didn't need it back at the Xbox <laughs> showcase where they come out and showcase new weapons. I'm like, oh, I would just want to be surprised by those right. when they mm-hmm. come out because I think yeah. it creates the conversation around the game of like, oh, did you see this? Like, this weapon was awesome. You know, high on life. Like, it's coming out in the twelve next 12 months. Don't tell me anything else. Yep. It looks awesome. I'm in. Like, we'll, you know, we'll rely on some reviews and what people see and play, and I think that that is enough. Mm, you're you right. Know? I think it needs to be short and sweet. Like, that's what I want to typically, a trailer that's only one to three minutes that kind of gives the core concepts of what the game is about. Maybe some gameplay, but otherwise, it's going to catch you right away. Like, if it doesn't, then I'm not going to have any interest in it. Yeah. Like, you can tell within, like, a couple seconds if this game is going to be for you or not. You know, if they're presenting it right. And, yeah. and different games need different amounts of explanation, mm-hmm. right? Like, I'm not annoyed at all that One Piece has released so much recently. Right, like that twelve minute because everything else has been like, what is this gonna be? Mm-hmm. Right, like familiar with the IP, yeah, mm-hmm. not not familiar with how it's going to play out, how it's going to move because there's no precedent for it before. And traditionally, anime made games have been garbage. Yeah, oh, you know? yeah. and so yeah. watching yeah, the, that I mean, one, the, yeah, like past uh, One Piece games, an example have been button masher uh destiny what destiny or destiny dynasty, dynasty warrior Warriors, style yeah. games yeah. um they did have that world seeker, world seeker a couple that was more of an action adventure but yeah but then with, yeah like this one it's like well is it going to be the same thing and they're mm-hmm. like nope, nope turn-based jrpg style we're yeah. doing something different and everything that they've released has been additive because it gives me more confidence that that game's going to be awesome yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. it's like that's the the amount of information that i want you know yeah mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, I think a lot, you know, as terms of how much do I want to see, it's just like the same as I'm, I've am i always been. I just, I want as little information as possible mm-hmm. because too many times in the past, myself personally, I felt let down by a game because it wasn't what I expected. And I always say the very first Fable is a ex- great example of that. Yep. Of all the promises they made of what that game was going to be. I bought every That's magazine awesome. it was in. I watched every video I possibly could, and this was before videos were even huge. You know, it was all like gaming magazines where you got right. it. You know, and then I finally played the game, and I was like, "Oh, cool! I beat the game, and I'm this old man, but my sister's still five. That makes no fucking sense. Like, it made no sense. It made no sense. And you couldn't do any of the stuff that you they prom they it's time travel. You know, and like you know, then Fable Two came out, and they kind of did more of what they said they were going to do with the first, but it was still the same thing. Like this is what we're telling you you're getting, but you're only really getting this much. Yeah. You know, and another one, another one just real quick that I, I remember, um, kind of go, go with like the weapon idea. Like, you know, you don't want to know all that stuff. Like the, the first Bioshock, I was super excited for the first Bioshock. And I remember like, this is how this power works and you can do this with it and you can do that with it. I never did any of that shit in the game. 
You yeah. didn't need to. <laughs> Like, they're like, oh, you can set these traps and catch... It's like, you don't need to do any of that. Like, you don't have to do any of that yeah. to progress. Like, so why show me that you can do these... Like, ooh, you can set the the wind one that shoots them up in the air, and you can set a, a mine on the ceiling to blow... Like, just put the fucking mine on the ground. You know, <laughs> run into it. Like, you don't, you know... So, like, things like that, it's like, I like the idea of... Yeah, I want to know what the mechanics are. I want to know how the combat works in some of those games. But, yeah, it's like, you, you get too much information... And then it's not exciting to play. It's like, well, I've already seen all this kind of yeah, done. I agree. You with know, that. now I just hope that the story carries me through the rest, of, the rest of it. You know? Especially with those mechanics, and you know, I'm just gonna tail off of your your Bioshock example of like, I feel like you know when Bioshock One released, there wasn't this streaming community. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. And when you put in mm-hmm. interesting mechanics like that, it's like, yeah, you don't have to. What they're showing you is you can mm-hmm. do, but when you present that in a trailer, it makes it feel like I'm going to have to use that mechanic to get exactly. it through the game. Mm-hmm. And you eviscerate your YouTube community or your Twitch community who's going to find all these funny ways and cool yeah. ways mm-hmm. to like mix the mechanics and yeah. and surprise and delight their the people that follow and watch what they're yeah. doing, yeah. you know? Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, and it's like kind of with like the Horizon game, the first one, it's just like, just let me fucking kill shit. I don't want to fucking set traps and wait and hope they walk and lure them over. Like, no, nah, man, just let me run around with my bow and shoot them in the face. And guess what? You could totally do that on story mode, which I'm playing exclusively on all all the Horizon, and it's great. I normally only use my bow, and I use, like, maybe one or two other weapons. Like, I don't use the trip caster. I don't use the... Uh, Oh, what the hell else is it? Oh my god. I don't do I don't set traps. I don't like throw a rock and lure them over. Like, no. I will go over there and I will Bone do my little face. power slide and I will shove my little javelin thing, my spear, right into that robot. But um it, it kind of in conclusion, it, it, I, I and I feel like this next thing is gonna be kind of what we already just talked about. But what should a great trailer include? For me, it would be that, what is this game? What is this game, and how do you play this game? You know, that that's... Give me some sort of context on what... Because now we've got games that, like like you said, Rob, like, well, we did with One Piece, we did, uh, we did a uh, fighting game. Uh, we did an action-adventure game. Well, now we got a turn st- or turn-based JRPG now, you know? So, like, franchises are doing different things with different games. Final Fantasy... They were normally traditionally all turn-based, you know, and now they are moving into much more a of a of like with sixteen, you know, an action style game. Yeah, and, and not, not the Devil May Cry guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On and the combat. And not even with Final Fantasy VII remake. Um, that is, you could almost argue that that is with their fighting system like turn-based to a certain extent, depending on how you actually, you know. Um, uh, you what what you pick in the settings or whatever, mm-hmm, yeah. or you could do it as an action game. But what is this game? Give me some sort of context of, about it. You know, kind of like how they do with those directs or those state of plays or whatever. Yeah. Just show me all that yeah. stuff, and then I'm good. I don't want to see anything else. Usually, want some bit of story, like something to give me an idea of what's to expect in it, some <laughs> gameplay. But I actually like intrigue or something. I want something that's going to make me think, what was that? Or like, what can I expect from this game? Mm-hmm. Like a little bit of a mystery in a yeah. trailer usually mm-hmm. goes a long way for me. I I would say the same thing. Well, two things. One, every Nintendo Direct has been absolute dog shit. <laughs> So I like you're like well there's like a mini direct I'm like they're all mini they're like four minute fucking shitty segments on their whoa, games. Whoa, whoa. I, are you serious? Yeah, really? Yeah. Fuck most of the stuff that Nintendo does. I love their properties. I have a Switch, but the, every the way that they present that's a hot take because shit. I I think that they were they were the ones that started doing these actually correct and then Sony Sony was the one that was doing them like terrible every state of play up until probably recent has been pretty bad yeah you know and then xbox they just started doing it because before they started they were doing like all cgi shit and Mm -hmm. not gameplay and they're like all right right, hold on we 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 got you now we got you now i feel like nintendo was the ones 
who have been doing it They're, well. The uh, the Xbox showcase was so great because they hadn't released a good showcase in like three years. <laughs> so I was like, well, yeah. I mean, we got all of the the top hits are coming now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sony yeah. for the last year has nailed a state of plays. I look forward to literally every single one of them. They crush it. They're they're all killer, no filler. Like they, it's just like. We're going to do this. We are setting your expectation. We're going to talk about these things. And then they get on stage, and they just do that. And it's lovely. But this is what Nintendo does, too. Nintendo never announces anything useful, good, or worthwhile. They're like, hey, here's a bunch of ports of games that you've played other places. Now, you can also do it on Switch. Here's a <laughs> game true. you didn't care about. Uh, probably still shouldn't care <laughs> about it, but it is going to come out. you know. And then they drop one thing, they'll be like... They're like, oh yeah, waiting on that uh, Mario Kart thing, huh? Well, Mario Kart DLC maps <laughs> are going to cost you an extra 12 bucks for a game you bought on three separate systems. Oh yeah, they might come out in the next three years. Like, it's just trash. How would you like to reply, Andy? I, I mean, he's not wrong that it's a port machine. He, he's not wrong, but I, I still think that they actually do that format and that actual format, I, I, I think, is, is they do it the best. Even though that the release is what they're putting out there, yes, <laughs> kind of bland at times. There's some of it, though, that I'm like legitimately excited about, but I think their actual format is, is really, really good. Um, and I think that's what State of Play and now Xbox is, have finally kind of like, okay, we need these bang, bang, bang. Our bigger things, we need to show a little bit more. But it's also, hey, we don't we we don't need a whole lot of people talking, mm -hmm. you know. Well, and when when it comes to a trailer, I just want to say, I'm enjoying this part. We're like, like a two faced bald guy, you know. We're the we're on opposite sides here. Just just one one mind, two bald dudes. Yeah, yeah. Totally totally opposite sides of the coin. I enjoy it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> perfect gameplay trailer introduces some of the story element, mm -hmm. right? Like, why is this existing? Very much a, a narrative-driven gamer. Mm -hmm. Have that cliffhanger of, like, oh, shit, I kind of understand, like, where this story is going to be headed towards, mm -hmm. and then a tiny bit of either in-engine or CGI next to some gameplay. Yeah. Right? That's... Because for me, when those lines are getting so close now, every so often when I have a game that has, like, really great CGI, but the gameplay models mm -hmm. aren't in that same caliber, I get a break of immersion. It's not bad in the game, you know, but it's just kind of like, ooh, dang, like, playing Ratchet and Clank, which, thanks for lending that to me, uh, I fucking forgot it again. Dang it. Uh, that Sorry. game, it feels like a movie, mm -hmm. because there's, like, almost no discernment between the yeah. CGI sections and the actual gameplay, and it's like, whoa, I, I didn't expect it to be that good mm -hmm. when it came mm -hmm. out. And mm -hmm. then there's other games where it's like, yeah, they really put in a lot of time on their their animations for their CGI, but then when you get back into the game, it's like, ooh, that's a that's a big step difference. You know? So when I see something that's a maybe like a a scene from the game, but it's like, hey, this is in engine, right? Or mm -hmm. this is in game, it's like, cool. That's actually probably gonna look pretty close to what I'm gonna yeah. play in the gameplay. Yeah, so. I mean, it's like the original Final Fantasy VII. They had the CG stuff, and then they had the character models, like combat models. Yeah. And then they had like the actual character models. They were three different styles yep. of game, uh, you know, of of visuals and. You know, I just still remember that shit being like, God, this is so fucking realistic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yep. But, this is uh, the best it'll ever be. But I mean, for me, for trailers, though, it, it, it just, it, just like a movie. Don't put all the good shit in the trailer, and then you go see the movie, and then you got an hour and a half of, well, all the good stuff was in the trailer. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, don't even need the movie. I mean, yeah. I don't want it to go to the level like what Marvel's been doing, where they're like showing stuff in the trailer, but in the final product, it's different, because they mm -hmm. don't want that to get out, yeah. much like uh, Infinity War, when it's like, Hulk's out there on the battlefield. Guess what? Yeah. Nope. <laughs> yep. Didn't even show up except for like 30 seconds in the beginning. You yeah. Know? That's like, so weird. I, I like, like that. I like that. Yeah, I like that misdirection. I mean, I don't want to see that for games because I'm going to go spend eight bucks to go see your movie. I'm spending 70 bucks right. to spend hours on your game. Like, yeah. don't fuck with me with that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, but like, That's a good point. but yeah, just, you know, build the world, show what the game and the premise is about. 
show how the combat, the the game mechanics are going to work. You know, because much like Luke said, if you typically can know within a five minute window of watching mm-hmm. it, is this something I'm interested in or not? Yeah. You know, because I mean, it can go either way. You know, recently started playing the Avengers game again. Now I think it's really fun. Back when it came out, it was kind of a piece of crap. But leading up to it, I was super excited for it because yeah. they yeah, everything they showed was what I wanted out of a superhero gate co-op game. Yeah. And then it came out and it was just Flat. kind of a turd. Sh- you should know? I download that again? You fuckers are playing that now. We're playing it, man. Hey, God damn it, it's 100 gigabytes. Yeah. <laughs> and that... But- yeah, we'll, we'll about wrap us up. Yeah, I, right. I will say on a closing moment, you you say made the movie reference. I feel like every trailer needs movie guy voice back. Movie he's, he's, guy, movie voice. guy voice is dead though. I know, but there's but gotta there's be there's a others. Sensor. There's others. I right? seen some TikToks with a with a uh, with a guy that that does more of the Still voice, voice or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Work, yeah, I just want he's everyone to just be like in a world, you know. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we don't have nearly enough that <laughs> of that, and it's made the movie trailer go from like a thirty second to a sixty second to like four and a half minutes. <laughs> like, these are mini movies now, and I'm, I'm out. <laughs> Well, thank you all for joining us. Uh, episode 8, Rad Gamer Dad's Podcast. Um, hit us up on our Facebook, on our Discord. We have a fairly active Discord where we like to get together, um, you know, get people to play games together because that's what this is all about. Yeah. Um, and also, we've got some exciting events coming up. At end of July, we got Bust an Axe, Throw Which Some Axes. Could potentially be done and over with when this comes out, maybe. I guess it No, I'll get it out it. before that. Okay. Don't okay. Yeah, it, it's good to throw that out there, though, because I have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> and release dates don't mean anything. Yeah, yeah. That, 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 that's right. That's right. <laughs> could we could now. delay our year. event. Yeah, we no, we're know. not going to delay yeah. our event. No. <laughs> Bust an Axe, you could win a copy of God of War Ragnarok, uh, among other things, if Ooh. you win. Which is, oh, which damn, is, I which didn't know that. I just found that out. Hot tacky. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Any more teaser. teaser. It's the teaser. You just dropped the teaser. I'm just, sorry. Um, <laughs> just put out the tip, man. Uh, all, also, our, our hangout um, at uh, Back Pocket at uh, kind of mid to end August. Uh, there's somewhere around that August time. August 20th. August 20th. Thank you for that date. <laughs> just looked at it yesterday. All right. Very good. <laughs> uh, and these dates and the descriptions of it, they're all on our Facebook, too, uh, under the events. Um, and... Except for this next one, because we haven't finalized a date on it yet, but for our next 24-hour stream, um, which is going to be probably mid-November sometime around there, you could win an OLED Nintendo Switch, Ooh. amongst other things, which I hear that that's pretty crisp, that OLED, that's, yeah. that, that's the kind of screen you want to be uh, looking at nowadays, but... Uh, hey, and there was a lot of games that we just didn't cover or we didn't get to. You're hyped for something? Drop it in the comments, man. And then, and, or woman, you know, I, I don't want to, whatever, you know. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, drop in the comments, let us know, uh, talk with us about it, and uh, see you in the next episode. Yeah.